Hey everybody, welcome to the video. This is going to be a what sold video. Um, we have a lot of orders going out. They need to be out tomorrow, Tuesday. Tomorrow, Tuesday is the 20th of June. And have uh, 33 orders going out tomorrow, as of right now, when I'm filming. And so I'm going to show you what sold, what you guys should be out there looking for, picking up. A lot of this stuff I've only had for maybe... Some of this stuff I've only had for a day or two. Some of it I've only had... I had sitting around for about a few months. Um, but I'll go through everything as I uh, get things ready here to be packed up. And uh, I just wanted to briefly touch on... I was watching a video this morning uh, regarding a cross-listing, summer slowdown. You may hear me talk about this in a few videos, but you know everybody's talking about summer slowdown. There's going to be a summer slowdown. I mean... For me, on eBay, eBay is one of the largest platforms to sell on. Maybe specific categories are more slower than others during the summer. But if you're still listing, if you're still picking up items that are selling, you know, they're really, you won't you really notice something. You know, some days may be slower than others, but, you know, as far as the whole season being slow, <laughs> it's kind of tough for me to justify or to say, yeah, I've experienced a summer slowdown. It's only slowing down because I've either I've slowed down in listing or I'm taking a vacation or, you know, I'm, you know, just being a little bit lazier in the day. I don't know. You know, that that's probably that's my those are my excuses for a summer slowdown. It's all me associated with what I'm doing, not necessarily associated with what buyers are doing, but maybe they're, you know, they're changing their buying habits during the summer and people in certain categories kind of, you know, get stuck. Uh, and then the other thing to combat that people, a lot of people are saying right now is to cross list, cross list, put your stuff on other platforms as well. I'm really against, um, cross listing items. I'm fine with, if you're going to post your items on eBay, on, um, on Poshmark or other platforms, you want to buy items specifically for those platforms and, like for whatnot, I sell on whatnot as well. I buy items specifically for whatnot. They don't go on eBay. They go only to whatnot. And I don't mix things up as far as, you know, oh, if it sells on whatnot, I'm going to cancel on eBay. I don't do that. It's either going on whatnot or it's going on eBay, one or the other. I've thought about doing Poshmark for some clothing. Um, you know, I just don't want to have so many things going on where I'm always... You know, watching my phone, watching the internet, it, you know, being on the internet, always, you know, jumping around, accepting offers. Uh, you know, I've seen people where they said, you know, I've crossed this in on Macari and, you know, it's sold within a day. I accepted a lower offer. Okay, well, why didn't, may, were there offers on eBay for that item at lower? You just didn't accept them? Was it a bad listing to start out with? You know, so my opinion is... Stick If you're going to stick to a platform, if you're going to have your items on one platform, leave them on that platform, and that's it. Don't move them around different platforms. And, you know, if you're not, you know, 100% optimized on eBay, if you're not efficient on eBay, which is the largest, probably one of the largest platforms out there, I mean, next to Amazon, if you're not efficient on there already, then maybe get more efficient. Go back to your old listings. Get better on eBay. If there's room for improvement on eBay, improve on eBay. Then maybe start looking at other platforms that you can list on. Um, and, yeah, as far as cross, I'm just really against cross listing and you know cancel. I know some programs will automatically cancel your stuff, but you know I've worked in IT, I've worked in programming. Um, you know, it's sometimes the, the the computer messes sometimes the program messes up and then you can end up selling items an item on eBay that already sold somewhere else and then it kind of hurt your you know your eBay store or you hurt your other store maybe you sold it on eBay and it didn't, if you know for some bizarre reason it didn't cancel out so be careful out there my recommendation don't cross list anything don't go to other platforms if you're good on one platform or you're comfortable on one platform Try to be as efficient and try to be the best at that platform that you can possibly get first 
before you start looking out at other places. I mean, my eBay store, I just started, you know, I made some changes to my eBay store and to help boost sales now that I have more time. And now my sales are going up. They're just to every day. They're just going up more and more. So knocking on wood, of course, you know, make sure things stay going up. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I just made a few minor changes and I've been doing this for over 20 years. So I made a few minor changes that I knew would help boost my sales. And it has. And they've really taken off. I mean, I have 33 orders going out. They have to be out tomorrow morning. And, you know, I've been averaging like between 10 to 15 orders a day. Which I wouldn't have been able to handle before. But now, no problem. <clears throat> so, uh, enough of that. Let's get to this. Let's get to these items here. Um, I think I showed this the other day in a video. The Bose headphones. I was replacing my other headphones. Uh, these were my headphones. I'm replacing them with another one. And these sold, uh, I posted that video like, I think I posted that video two days ago, but these were listed three days ago, sold $60, asking price. This is something I did not put best offer on. I just priced it competitively and I have the box. I have all the accessories with it. So I knew it was gonna go for what I'm asking. So I did not select best offer. And I don't put best offer on everything out there. Probably about 90, 90, between 90 and 95% of my items have best offer, but some items, another one right here, Fitbit Zip. This one sold for $65. This one, brand new in the box, the case, found this at a Goodwill, and so I decided, you know what, I'm not gonna put offers on it. These things are going, they're going every day, and sure enough, someone paid $65 for that. And this was purchased, I don't know, about a week ago or so, so sold within a week. This one here, I think I just threw up the video for my flea market, but this thing I found at the flea market, another item I did not post um, best offer on, and it sold for $33. That's, you know, that took, I went to the flea market on last uh, Friday, um, so that's about one, two, two, three days ago. I uh, listed it the next day, so about two days, and that sold. Uh, what else we got here? We got some discs. Look out for old discs. Uh, this wasn't like a, you know, again, this is the flea market find. So I got it in a big old bundle and I probably paid less than a dollar for all this, uh, for all the things I got in that bundle. This, I took an offer for five bucks. So yeah, not, not a crazy profit, but it's still a little something. And these old discettes and the bigger discettes, the five and a quarter inch ones, um, big packs of CDs or big packs of DVDs that haven't been used yet. Are definitely uh, will definitely sell on eBay. And here's a collection of de uh, ten. These are the uh, what are these three and a half inch? Uh, what size are they? Doesn't say. Uh, yeah, three and a half inch. Three and a half inch or two and a half inch? These are three and a half inch diskettes. Some bit older diskettes. People still look for them. If you see them out there, you know it's a reasonable price. Definitely try to pick it up. Five bucks. That'll be an easy ship. A um, couple of temperature sensors for Google Nest. These were brand new. These I got from Goodwill. These I got for $3.99 each. And those both sold to one person from my phone. <clears throat> they actually shot me an offer. I had offers open on that. And those both together... Together they sold for where is or the order? It's in here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh here we go. Uh they both sold for thirty six dollars. So you know they were what I think they were four ninety nine and four ninety nine each. Um three ninety nine. I remember I'm confusing myself now. But either way. $36 for both of those. They're going out the door. Roku streaming stick. I sold this. I accepted a little low offer of $15 for this. It probably would have gone for more. It's the um, Roku 4K streaming stick. Uh, it's complete in there. Hasn't been used. It is opened. I opened it to make sure it was there. I got it from the flea market. And I got this at the flea market for only $2. And sold for $15. Decided just to give somebody a good deal. And, you know, just to move things along in my store. That was a great pickup. This also was in a previous video. 
This I saw at the flea market on Friday. This is an arm of the character Apocalypse from Marvel. This I shot out offers and I got uh, someone to accept a $19 offer on this. So $19 for an arm. <laughs> Again, this is Marvel. This is from the Build-A-Figure series. Early 2000s. And um, you would buy the different characters. Like you would buy Wolverine. You would buy Cyclops. And you would get a piece of Apocalypse to build uh, to build the main character. Which I wanted that character for a while. I've seen him at conventions before. But I haven't pulled the trigger on it just yet. But I did find an arm. And sold it. 19 bucks. So keep your eye out for these. They're hard to identify, yes. But I knew what it, exactly what it was. And if you're, you know, well-versed in Marvel and, and action figures, you might be able to spot these two. Because there's other characters, too, that are buildable as well. I think the other really valuable one is the Sentinel from the Marvel series. So look out for pieces from that. Um, another item that sold uh, took about a month. I thought I'd listed this a while ago, but... I was looking it up and I was like, oh, we listed that back in May 7th. This is by a designer. Um, it's not on the tag here, but this is a Laurel Birch. If you scan it with Google Image, they'll come up with that. She's known for this type of cat design, usually in purses and clothes. Oh, here it is. Usually in purses or in clothing. Laurel Birch. But uh, we found this hat at the Goodwill. And this hat was $2.19. Um, generally, the hats are about four dollars, and uh, but the, but you know the lower end, what they consider lower end hats are the ones that don't have you know they don't pop up like the new era ones. They kind of like the floppy hats. They'll usually price a little bit lower. So this was priced at two dollars nineteen cents. Listed this one on May seventh, and the reason why I know that date is because I just looked it up. I was like, what the? How long has that been sitting out for? Not that long. A little over a month. And I took an offer of $12 for that hat to get that out the door. A um, couple items that someone uh, bought here. These were bought a little while ago. These ornaments have been sitting since Christmas. So uh, I picked up a bunch of ornaments um, right before Christmas, hoping they would sell. And they kind of just sat there. So I was like, oh, well, I mean, next Christmas will be around. And uh, all these I got, like this one here, yeah. We've got for three bucks this whole train set this one sold for twelve dollars this one these ornaments these train ones i got at a garage i got a bunch of train ones at a garage sale and they're all a dollar a piece so that one sold for six bucks um then this little guy this is all a bundle offer to one customer i would never buy again <laughs> but he was kind of cool little bear dude we picked him up at a goodwill uh dollar it had to have been about a dollar or so, but I don't really know 100%. This was last year's purchase, and now it's sold in this bundle here. And this one sold for $7.20. But definitely not picking that up again. That lasted quite a while. I don't mind sitting on some new stuff. Like if it's a new like Hallmark ornament, it's a Christmas. Christmas is going to come back around. What is this guy associated with? I don't even know. Not really a holiday, but... Not a hot item. I wouldn't recommend buying that. But nonetheless, it's contributing to this sale for this weekend. Um, let me get these boxed up and I'm bring another load out and we'll go over those. All right. Just adjust that a little bit. Okay, more orders going out. Um, these shoes, I featured these in the video. Um, they sold. It was a person... It was kind of, you know, when you're dealing with customers on eBay or in person, whatever, you're going to have those customers that just ask a bunch of questions. And there was a person that was messaged. As soon as I posted these, not too long after that, I started getting messages from someone asking me, where'd you get them from? Do they smell? Did you wear them? Has somebody worn them? Just a list of different questions coming in. And I ended up just blocking the person, and they sold actually the next day. Someone sent me an offer for thirty bucks, and I accepted it. They should, I mean, they, they were in better condition. They would have gone for more, but I was happy with the thirty dollars. It's about a, you know, probably about twenty dollar profit after fees and everything on these shoes. You know, they're pretty dirty, pretty, you know, they are clean. I did clean them the best I could, but they sold relatively good in a few days. So 
that was a quick sale be wary of people that ask a bunch of questions i had another person too message me about those bose headphones from a little bit ago i've already boxed those up they're asking a bunch of questions i was out at a goodwill they're asking what about this what about this how do they work how do they sound how do they look how do they clean and then ultimately they ended with what's your return policy you know if i just don't like them can i return them I was like, oh man. So I just told them, you know what? These are used. They're not in perfect condition. I would recommend you buying from someone else. And I went ahead and blocked them. Don't be afraid to block buyers on eBay. Some of them are just, I mean, everything, most of the stuff I'm selling to you. So they're asking a billion questions already ahead of time. Most of the time, it's going to end up or turn into a return and you know go through that headache have your items sitting waiting you know goes to the person you're waiting for it, them to send it back and meanwhile that money's tied up so better just to block them uh as you get experience you'll learn you know the people some people with message and these are genuine questions but some people are just you know badgering with their questions and once they start doing that to me i just tell them please you know find another item buy it from someone else and uh, immediately block them just in case so that way they don't they don't purchase anything because i don't want to deal with customers like that um if legitimate questions yeah no big deal but some people are just peppering you with questions and once they start doing that it's, that's it i'm out i don't want your business um there's another cool item cool items i picked up these sat for a little while for a few months but they're little plushes they're called celestial buddies and there's the earth there's a whole i had the whole um the whole uh, uh solar system all the planets and the asteroids and everything this mars these are the last three that i had um and mars earth and jupiter's in there if you find them they are pretty good i got these uh for a dollar they were a dollar 59 each at the goodwill and i picked them all up and these ones here i accepted offers of eight dollars each for them so got them moving got them out of the store and they were all going to one person so that's a great just to bundle everything up and a poly bag, they're plush, so nothing will get damaged. That's that was a great, great little purchase there. Uh, another items uh, you should be looking out for. I showed you the Star Wars graphic novels in a previous video. At the same savers, I picked up all these Dungeons and Dragons manuals too. Uh, these aren't graphic novels; these are manuals. So, um, and I don't think I can ship these. They they're probably they. I was going to try to ship these media mail, but I don't want to risk it, any issues with the post office, any problems. So I went ahead and I'm going to put these in, um, uh, same thing for goes for the Star Wars ones. Comics aren't allowed for media mail, so you have to ship those either first class or these are heavy. So these are going, um, I'm able to get these inside a poly mailer and I'll actually, you know what, I'm going to show you guys how to, how to uh package these up at the end so dungeons and dragons savers these were each about um either a dollar 99 or 2.99 and then every fifth book you got for free so it comes out you know, i don't know like a dollar 50 a book and these ones have been going these aren't going as good as the star wars um but they are selling uh for right around 20 bucks a book so not too bad and plus all the shipping supplies i'm getting for free from from the post office so that's good too um, this one down here um, went for $18. This one here is a little bit of a thicker book. And this one sold for $16. So, not bad. Uh, then we had another thing that hasn't been in the store for very long is this little light up Mickey Mouse guy. I think I featured this in a video already. And here's the bottom to it. And that sold $25. And you know what? I did not turn offers on on that so that's sold without anybody sending me an offer uh, memory computer memory definitely something to look out for if you know what you're doing um, i wouldn't recommend anybody that's not familiar with building computers or computer parts to to jump into that arena it, it's a very high learning curve but pick these up i featured these in the video i think i got them really cheap, like four bucks or something and they ended up uh no offers i didn't i didn't put any offers on this and these ones sold for full asking price which is what is that 40 bucks so that's a pretty good profit there 
Um, got some more shoes here. These shoes have been sitting for probably about two months now. I thought they would go pretty quick because they are Sorel. Sorel is a, is a bolo brand in shoes. Um, it's a brand you want to look out for. These are practically brand new, which, you know, just athletic shoes. Got pretty neutral colors. I thought these would sell quick. I thought they would sell for my full asking price, but they didn't. Took an offer at 25 bucks and got them out of here. Another pair of shoes gone, out of inventory. Um, another thing I picked up, these I picked up a while ago. These I picked up probably about February or March. They've sold, they just haven't sold for as, as quickly as I thought they would, or was hoping they would. Um, I still have the price tag on this one, which I gotta take it off before I ship it out, but paid $5.99 for all these. And I think I even got a little bit of a deal because I bought a bunch of them. I, I bought a whole bunch of these. They're all pretty much the same character. This one and Hammerhead, I believe, is the other character. These aren't old. These are the newer newer ones. But I bought a whole bunch of them. And this one's going out for 15 bucks. Guy offered me $15 and I think like 60 cents or something. So, boom, getting that out of here. Would I buy them again? Mmm maybe uh, no probably you know they're taking up quite a bit of space they are a bigger package as far as the action figures got to make sure you know you don't damage the you know, this already had damage i just closed that but you want to make sure you don't do too much damage to the box the way when you're storing it so i i don't know i probably wouldn't jump into this arena again but i have them anyway so this is another one that sat forever which we will not be buying again but it did sell, and it did sell for... There's some things that I joke with my wife. I'm like, hey, uh, so that item is still out there, or you know, we'll see it again out there and be like, hey, you want to pick that up again? And it's still sitting in inventory, like just waiting to be sold. This is Costa Boda. Um, I believe this is probably sold like a TJ Maxx. Sold for just under $24. Um, and this one was a pickup. I don't recall the exact price we picked it up at, but it was probably around the $5 mark is what these would go for at Goodwill. This was a Goodwill pickup. I'll take it out just to show you guys. I mean, maybe we had it priced too high, but it's a really nice, you know, little... It's not frosted glass. It actually looks like it's covered or it's been... Uh, it's definitely been painted, yes. It has been painted. This isn't glass. But just a nice little glass. It is signed. So when you are looking for glass, generally you want to make sure it is signed. I mean, not all good glass is signed, but you know the sign that when if it's signed, it kind of helps its its uh, appeal to people. But definitely wouldn't pick up this type of glass again. So it, it's a cool little vase. Someone will like it. It's got a very nineties ish vibe to it. So. That's going out. Um, let me start boxing this stuff up and then I'll jump right back on. Show you guys how to box it up. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to box up these books here. Um, you know, these are conductor items, so you do want to, you know, take care with how you're packaging them, make sure they arrive safe. And this is the best way I found to do it, especially with those Star Wars ones, too. Uh, you'll take a these are all these uh, packaging products are free from the post office I take a flat rate envelope a priority envelope and I'll place the book inside there Oop, just like so and then we'll go ahead and close uh, seal that up you can fold it doesn't have to be perfect but you don't want to get the you obviously don't want to get the glue on the product so then there's that it's all boxed up then i take another box uh, another priority box and i split it in half this is a, a, a medium size uh, priority mailbox and i just cut them in half and i use these to kind of add some support or some rigidity to the overall package like so then we place it inside the padded envelope and so it's got a little bit of rigidity from the actual Sometimes you might need to adjust this depending upon the width of the, uh, the thickness of the book. As you can see, I might need to cut a little bit off here. Um, 
this fit in there just like that perfectly but once i added the book then things got a little bit not about that much then things got a little bit too thick and i was going to be able to get it in there but so then you just probably need a good pair of scissors to cut off lock that off really quick place the book back in there boom 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 now this should fit nice there we go okay. just kind of shimmy it in there make sure not to um, tear the package tear the uh bubble wrap but there we go this bubble wrap's pretty durable so there we, there we go slide that all the way down pull it in perfect let's make sure there we go boom 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 that's in there put that off put that off fold that over boom there it is the book's all packaged up going priority padded it's like eight dollars and twenty cents and that'll get out to the customer i'm gonna do the same thing for the other book but that's how you um that's how i do these higher end books to make sure they get there safely obviously you know i measure it out prior to making sure that it can actually fit in there and this is the best way to get it there without any uh damage uh, to the book hopefully no damage to the book again hopefully no damage to the book there <laughs> otherwise i think that's where i'm gonna end this video right here guys just uh i don't want the videos to get too long i want to keep them right around 30 minutes or so but I still have several items I'm going to be boxing up, some clothing items. Um, if there's anything really interesting, I'll probably cut it in. But um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next video. Thank you guys very much for watching. Appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, comment and subscribe, please. Um, and hopefully you guys like this content and hopefully you guys learned something. Thank you.